Institute.com. Looking at a periapical radiograph of one of Dr. Queso's patients. He was, I noticed a set of models on his desk. So he's going to talk about a diastema closure and sort of his approach to it. So we don't have any preoperative radiograph photos, but we have uh, what he completed today and a wax up. Go. Okay, so here we have a patient who congenitally missing number seven and number 10, the, the upper maxillary lateral incisors. Uh, currently he's wearing a valplast to replace those. It doesn't have quite enough time to do anything else with it. Uh, these are his initial photos that we took prior to hygiene or anything else, but noticed he does have a little bit of a diastema closure, which was done approximately 12 years ago with composite resin. Um, notice the discoloration around the margins. Also the bulkiness uh, right around the gingival area. The gingiva is a little bit inflamed right there and it just doesn't look quite natural on him. Uh, what makes this case a little bit challenging as well is he's edge to edge class 3 occlusion. Uh, anterior hitting one another so there's no overjet or overbite to be able to compensate and lengthen those teeth out at all. Alright so let's see your wax up. You <coughs> talked about doing a wax up okay. and all the other stuff. Sure. That's how I saw this case. Okay. Go ahead, man. Okay, so here's a... <clears throat> when, I, when I spoke with the patient about what he wanted to do, he said he, he would like to redo it. You, you've seen the x-ray where the, this uh, quite... Uh, on the tooth number nine, the upper left central incisor has almost like a box that's sitting right down in the gingiva. Uh, not really conducive to good hygiene or keeping it clean or keeping it from having decay form underneath it. So he said he wanted to leave a little bit of a space between the two front teeth. He felt like that was part of his personality. So I said, well, we can take it off and give a little bit better of a contour, help make the gingiva appear a little bit more healthy, uh, as well as make the, the shade match uh, a little bit better. So I decided to do a wax up on it, took an anterior triple tray to be able to replicate his occlusion as well. Um, before I actually started waxing, I noticed that the architecture of the gingiva was not symmetrical, so I'd have to play a little bit with the composite to change the uh, optical appearances of it. Um, when I had them equal with a bully gauge, the tooth number eight appeared wider just because it was shorter. You're going to be talking symmetrical between the two teeth themselves, and not the, talking no, about the canines. Not, not the canines or anything. I'm mostly just focusing on the centrals because these canines are pretty pretty far back as well as he's got the valplast that covers that a little bit. We're mostly focusing just on the, the two centrals for this point. So uh, started looking at that and noticed also that it wouldn't take too much to actually close the diastema completely. So we did another wax up where we actually closed the diastema completely. I uh, didn't articulate this one though. But same thing, notice that the, the line of where the gingiva forms the zenith on either tooth was not symmetrical so it gives an optical illusion that one is wider versus the other. So I spoke with the patient today and what we ended up doing is we removed the old composite diastema uh, closure that was placed previously and we did a little gingival contouring with a 15 blade and then with a laser to uh, make them look symmetrical first off and we'll give it a couple weeks to heal, take a new impression and do a new wax up and do uh, direct composite diastema closure at that point. And you were talking about, well we talked two things, osseous bone contouring if you mm -hmm. thought it was necessary. It's, I guess you'd have to do... Uh, yeah, this patient doesn't have enough time to be able to do uh, complete osseous uh, contouring as well as a gingivectomy. Um, I, I explained to him that doing this, this just on the gingiva, there's a potential for it to regrow. Uh, because it follows the bone structure that's underneath it. He understood that and was willing to proceed at this point. Um, he said that what, we, what we're going to do when he comes back, we're going to go ahead and wax the diastema completely closed, uh, send him home with a uh, bisacryl uh, temporary mock, material, mock-up, mock um, let him keep it for the night and for a couple days, see how his family and his wife like it and then bring him back the next day if he's happy with it we'll go ahead and take that off and do a direct composite buildup. Uh, if he wants to modify it we'll do some modifications and then send him home with those modifications and let him try it out for another couple days. Uh, but there is a chance that he will need osseous contouring um, but 
we'll have to Maybe cross that bridge when it gets to it. So you just removed a little bit with the 15 blade just up here. Is that what you did, or did you do a whole band, or what did you end up doing? Uh, what we ended up doing, let's see, we get red. So we actually took a little bit from this to, it looks almost like a straight line. Yeah. So we contoured it a little bit more, and then uh, made it symmetrical on <laughs> tooth number eight. And I've got some photos we can show you right here of what it ended up looking like. That's a pretty simple technique. Very simple. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting to know that one thing you mentioned is that even though you've measured the widths and it still looks wider because of the, it's shorter. Exactly. So something that we, for the residency, I never really thought about that at yeah. all. And the other thing that we were going to do if he wasn't, didn't want to proceed with the, uh, the gingivectomy today, um, we would have to play with the, where the transitional line angles are. We'd have to to make the tooth appear a little bit more narrow, we'd have to put the transitional line angle more towards the center of the tooth, mm, that's a good point. towards the distal, um, which gives the tooth a little bit more of a slender appearance versus, and then on likewise on tooth number nine, we put the transitional line angle a slightly more towards the mesial, which would give it an appearance of being a little bit wider, mm -hmm. which is kind of what we did on this, this one right here. Mm. But I'll pull up the photos and let you see what those look like on his mouth. Okay, so here's the uh, the patient again with his previously placed composite resin diastema closure. Like I said, on the you've seen the x-ray, it's got the ledge uh, where it was just sitting in the gingiva. So from here, he went to hygiene, had some stuff cleaned up, started taking care of himself a little bit better, and we took off the composite resins. And this is where we are left. So we have the gingiva obviously is a little bit inflamed where that composite was sitting. Um, you see a little indentation where it was sitting almost like a pontic of a, of a FDP. Um, so at this point, again, you can see that the, the contour of the gingiva is not symmetrical between the two centrals. So the plan now that the composite is out of the way is we are going to recontour tooth number nine just a little bit, giving it more natural appearance and then match that same architecture on tooth number eight. So we started with a scalpel, 15 blade, uh, removing just slightly in the mesial of number nine, then matching that on tooth number eight. Then we went with a laser to remove just a little bit more as well as cauterize. And this is what we are left with. So now a little bit more symmetrical appearing. Uh, the zenith is slightly more towards the distal than I would have liked. So we went ahead and recontoured it just slightly a little bit more as well as clean the teeth up with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide to get rid of the remnants of the laser procedure. And this is what we are left with for now. Uh, we'll let him go home and heal for about a week. Uh, very minimally invasive. We actually didn't even use any anesthetic uh, injection. We used just topical anesthetic on him and then we will continue and give him the diastema closure. Super. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.